What's the best thing to add to your turbo motor besides more boost? How about a small shot of nitrous? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're answering the following question. We've got two of my favorite things. We've got nitrous and boost, but if you've got a junkyard LS and you add a turbo to it, what happens if you then add nitrous? Okay guys, let's jump right in and find out how well nitrous works with boost. Spoiler alert, <laughs> one of them is awesome, the other one's awesome combined, they're even more awesome. This was test, this first test was run on a 5.3 liter LS. This motor was kind of a stock motor, um, it was supplied by the guys at Strictly Performance, so it had a stock 5.3 iron block, it had a stock uh, crankshaft, stock Gen 4 rods, and it had flat top Gen 4 pistons, you know, like on the 4.8 or on the HO versions of the 5.3. The pistons were also hard anodized and had ring gap in them. This one had a set of, the way that they supplied that it has a set of ported 706 heads from the guys at KTEC, which flow pretty well. This one had a good size camshaft in it. This one was comp. Their camshaft was a 605, 610 lift, a 231, 237. A degree duration and 115 degree lobe separation angle. We also had a fast LSXR intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body and inch and seven eighths headers when we ran this thing NA. But we did not get to run this thing NA and uh, unfortunately with this camshaft we ran it with a bunch of other camshafts NA and then we started adding doing turbo stuff to it so we didn't get to run this combination NA. But we're comparing what happened when we ran it with our single turbo versus running with the nitrous in that single turbo and on this combination we ran a single turbo with the uh, truck exhaust manifolds facing forward, a custom Y pipe with two turbo smart wastegates with seven PSI springs. We had a manual controller on it with a turn and a half going to both gates. We had our Procharger air to water intercooler, and then we had a Precision Turbo 7675. And we ran this thing on E85 with 89 pound injectors. So run in this manner, this thing had a peak boost of under seven pounds. It had a peak of about 6.8 pounds, and then out at the horsepower peak was uh, 6.3 pounds. I'll show you the boost curves here in a minute. But run in this manner, our Turbo 5.3 produced 674 horsepower and 619 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happens when we add in our nitrous setup. Take a look at this. So this is with a Zex uh, wet EFI kit, basically a single fogger nozzle that you feed nitrous and fuel in, combine them together, you mount it in front of the throttle body or in the discharge tube running from the, the turbo, you know, we normally put it after the intercooler, so you can put it right in front of the throttle body or in the discharge tube anywhere, anywhere after the intercooler. And on this combination, we ran this thing with Nitrous jet, a 46 nitrous jet and a 28 fuel jet. And then we, what we do before we run the nitrous on anything is we do a flow test on the fuel system to make sure that we have the right amount of fuel flow. And then with our nitrous, we put the nitrous bottle in the heater and it's basically a water heater and bring the bottle up to temperature properly so that we have enough uh, bottle temperature and the, and the, and the uh, corresponding bottle um, pressure to supply the right amount of nitrous for this. But with the 46 pound jet, we increased the power output from 673 to 802. Peak torque went from 621 foot pounds to 766 foot pounds. So it did fairly well, but let's take a look at the, the boost curves and I'm gonna show you what happened when we added the nitrous. Okay guys, real quickly, let's take a look at the boost curve supplied on our turbo 5.3 liter, just running the turbo and then what happens after we added the nitrous. So this was the boost curve supplied on our combination. We actually started out down below five and three quarter pounds, rose to a peak of six and three quarter and then kind of fell off a little bit down to six. 
This is not a, this is a change of one PSI. It looks like it's a lot, but basically this is just the scaling. Here's, a, uh, let's take a look and see what happens after we added the nitrous. And again, it's important to point out that this was run with a manual controller, no electronic controller, which maybe stabilized this, but I wanted to show you what happens when we added the nitrous. Obviously we're adding power with the nitrous because the nitrous itself is adding power. But also we saw a, a, you know, a change in the boost curve too. N not a lot on this one, much more actually on the second one that I'm about to show you, but it went from about six and three quarter uh, PSI up to eh, 7.3, 7.4 PSI or so. But you can see after we added the nitrous, it consistently had you know, a little bit more boost, about three quarters of a pound or so. So that's also responsible for part of the power change. It's not just the nitrous, obviously. We had a change in boost. Okay, guys, we ran nitrous once again on another LS combination, this time on a bigger six liter. And in this case, we actually did not run an intercooler. We were actually doing a test, and I have a full video up on this. We were trying to use the intercooler or use the nitrous as the intercool to help cool the charger because you have a hundred and negative 129 degree nitrous. Obviously it could be pretty cooling, but as it turns out, it's not that effective as an intercooler. There's just not enough nitrous to offset the, you know, high temperature, uh, the amount of high temperature air that's in there relative to the, the small amount of nitrous in there, but it does add lots of power as we'll see. So our six liter test motor, was uh, originally an LY6. It had a stock bottom end with ring gap in it, including the truck oil pan and stuff. It did have good heads coming in, take manifold on it. It had Trick Flow 225 heads on it. It had a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 twin turbo cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you guys can see that. And this was the combination that we used for the Big Bang motor that made 1,543 horsepower. We had a uh, trend push rods in it, a Dorman LS6 intake manifold, a stock throttle body. To that, we added our um, truck exhaust manifolds, a custom Y-pipe with the two Turbo Smart wastegates on it, an S475 Borg Warner Turbo, uh, the, uh, again, no intercooler. We had our um, wastegate set at uh, 7 PSI with the springs on them. And then we just did a comparison running this thing basically on the wastegate and then once again on the wastegate after adding the nitrous. So running this configuration on E85, our combination, our turbo 6 liter produced 723 horsepower at 6,800 and 641 foot-pounds of torque at 5,100 RPM. Here's what happens when we added our nitrous. Like before... Pretty big gains. I mean, it went all the way up to over 900 horsepower, 907 horsepower. And I'm discounting the big spike that's right here. I'll go ahead and circle that. The big spike was actually 944 horsepower. Uh, peak torque checked in at 885 foot-pounds on the nitrous combination. And I'll go ahead and show you like we did before. Interesting things happened with the boost curve when we activated the nitrous. But you can see everywhere we activated the nitrous, you know, we, we, we made lots of power. This thing started out at about 6.8 pounds. It rose to a peak of 10.6 in the middle. I think that that's near the activation. And then kind of leveled off down to 9.4 PSI. So the nitrous, obviously, big effect. And I'll go ahead and let you guys know on this nitrous setup. We had a 52 nitrous jet and a 28 fuel jet on it, and it worked pretty well. Now let's take a look at the what happened with the boost curves. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the boost curves, as I promised. Comparison between running the thing without nitrous and then what happened when we activate the nitrous. And this is, shows you the wastegate control that's happening when you have a like large influx of power like we did with the nitrous setup. This is the um, boost curve without the nitrous and it runs up to about a little over seven pounds and then kind of comes across you see it looks a little jaggedy um that's actually just a signal falling out that's just actually a, a data collection issue this thing actually had just has kind of a nice curve that, that flows over and goes goes to seven pounds you, you'll see what i'm talking about when we uh, add the nitrous here's what happened here's the boost curve when we added the nitrous and you can see you can kind of get a little bit better idea the um, curve is doing much more on the nitrous run 
we had a better signal um, for the data collection on the dyno. But when we added the nitrous, you can see instead of this thing being, you know, around seven, seven and a half pounds, we had a big jump in boost. That's because obviously if you have a big jump in power, a big jump in an exhaust flow, it's going to affect the way the wastegate is acting. And also we didn't have an electronic boost controller on this thing. So it wasn't able to like compensate for that. I don't know that it could that quickly anyway, but we jumped up from, so part of the change in power that we saw was jumping up from about seven and a half pounds to like nine and a half pounds. So when you add nitrous, good things happen. It adds a bunch of power with the nitrous and in this case, <laughs> added a little bit of boost. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And if you're looking for t-shirts, we got our wrong cam t-shirts now available. And also, if you're looking for a cam for your LS, I got two really good ones. They're $179 shipped in stock.